Like a lot of you out there, my weekend warring started with a losing battle against Friday Night Rush Hour. <laughs> it was a nightmare. But through the power of podcasts and music, I got to my destination, got to where I needed to be, and no sooner, we were asleep. Now, even though getting down to the gorge was my top priority on the day, anyone stopping at the Black Canyon has to see the painted wall. It's seriously so beautiful, but we couldn't stay long because the sun was rising quick and we had a full day ahead of us. So it was time for final gear checks before we dove into the canyon. Now it should be noted that getting to the national park itself is fairly easy. I think it's about 20 minutes from the town of Montrose. So if you're staying over there, it's not that bad of a drive at all. But if you wanna actually get down into the gorge and potentially do some fishing, this is where things become a bit more complicated. Most of the information you're gonna find about actually accessing the gold medal section of the Gunnison, it's gonna to refer to routes. These routes are essentially unmarked scrambles down to the river that are a, let's just say, go at your own risk type of adventure. There are a handful of these routes sprinkled throughout both the north and the south side of the rim. And I will say, there's limited information, so what I use to research, I've linked down below, so go check out those links if you're actually interested in going down one of these routes. But today, we are hiking down the Warner route. Yeah, it's a straight drop off. After two miles of scrambling and almost 3,000 feet of elevation drop, we had finally made it to the river. And let me tell you folks, I was feeling it. But because we had packed in all of our gear, we needed to take a second and stop. Number one, soak in the sun, and number two, get our rods rigged up because it was time to do some fishing. Now, with an adventure of this magnitude, there's always a certain level of uncertainty because you hike down, you're gonna be staying there all day. But luckily for us, we got into the fish quick. That morning sun was starting to heat up the canyon and the fish were getting active. Now, the Gunnison is known for its trophy browns and rainbows, and occasionally you'll find some cutthroat. They, they hold up in some pockets here and there. But so far, I wasn't exactly convinced of the trophies, let's just say, but I sure was happy that we were getting on some quick fish. That is an eight ball corner pocket brownie brown. Oh, <laughs> there he goes, man. Dare I say, gorgeous. <laughs> that, is, that is fantastic. 
This hike down was an absolute beast. Getting on those uh, quick fish has been very, very nice. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. At this point in the day, we'd only been in the canyon for about an hour or so, but it was clear to see that our bright, sunshiny morning was quickly turning into an overcast afternoon. And this was fine, the clouds are great for fishing, but the way they were rolling in had me a bit concerned. I always make sure to check the weather no matter where I go, but especially when coming to a canyon. Because number one, you can't really see onto the horizon. You're kind of at the whim of the winds. And number two, the weather in this region can be uncertain at times and can really turn on a dime. So as we kept moving upstream, I made sure to keep my eyes on the sky and my fingers crossed that the clouds would stay clouds and not turn into thunderstorms. Beautiful little bugger. See him back. See ya, buddy. Nice. <laughs> For those of you out there who've been fishing long enough, you know this feeling. It's the, oh wow, this is a big fish feeling. We hooked into this fish and I could tell it was big but I had no idea how truly massive this fish was. It was time to set that hook and hold on, cause this was gonna be a wild ride. I can't get him to turn. Time and time again, I would try my best to get her to turn her head. This way she'd be fighting the current and the strength of my rod. But every time I'd try, she would violently turn the other way and go screaming downstream. This fish was smart and knew how to fight. No! No! I gotta be careful. Good Christ, that's just a big fish. So on top of having a massive, smart trout on the end of our line, we were having to fight the river itself. Between the current and the slippery rocks, this freestone river was a tough environment to maneuver. We were either gonna get swept away or fall because this was touch and go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why you come to the Gunnison. Holy actual trout. <laughs> Look at that fish. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's the Gunnison brute we're looking for. Since we fought this fish so hard, I'm really going to make sure that she is 100% A-OK -okay before I let go of control, let's just say. So, I'm going to take her out of the net and just Hold her in place and start reviving her back to, hopefully, swimming condition. Oh, 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 okay, okay. I think she's good, yes. <laughs> Woo! She just took off. I, I don't know what to say. I, I don't know what to say. That, that is my biggest bow all summer. My, dude, that might have been one of my biggest trout. That thing was a tank and it knew how to fight. The GMO bow, that's why we fished for him, man. <laughs> that sucker fought like, like the damn the Dickens. That was, oh my gosh. I'm, I'm like flabbergasted. I really don't know what to say. I, I think I got it on my GoPro, but she took me so far down. like through this nasty rapid section, hopping over boulders, trying to get her to go. She 
knew how to work that current. I tell you what, she knew so flipping well. I just get. How do I thank the fish gods after that? I, 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 I don't know what to do. That was amazing. Oh, the Gunnison. Oh, the Gunnison. In the chaos of all that, I don't know if it saw through, but we caught that fish on the swing. I like to call those pseudo swings because I'm not actually full on swinging my flies through. I casted it up, kind of coming towards the end of the run. I thought, you know what? Let's just let it run through. And what happens is that as these bottom flies start to feel the tension of that swing, they rise. And that, I've noticed it elicits a bite out of a lot of fish. And that big GMO bow came up and whomped the Pat's rubber legs. Of all things, the Pat's. I, <laughs> I've never fished these things, it's hilarious. And I think <laughs> while I rest my forearms, because I'm I'm legitimately sore, that fight took forever. I think it's time for future Mike to insert why, why I'm calling these GMO bows. <laughs> That's what you like to see right there. We've been running pretty hard so far. I think here is as good a place as any to stop, get some lunch, calm the legs for a second, and watch this amazing piece of water and this <laughs> painted rock scene behind us, man. Oh my gosh. We've got a lunch of champions today. Liquid sandwich, the tall boy cores, gotta have it. An orange, gotta have, gotta have a little vitamin C. And finally, whatever flavor cliff bar in here. <laughs> Here's a Rocky Mountain cheers to that Mondo we caught. Fantastic. That's backpack warm, I love that. <laughs> Well, as I was contemplating life over lunch, I thought to myself, man, this big water, it's, it's a little bit intimidating. Not, uh, <laughs> not really what I've been fishing recently. And one of my favorite ways to remedy the big water question is by swinging. We caught our biggest fish of the day on the swing, and I'm in this big open section. It looks like I can get up and go down, and on either side there are big, deep troughs. And yeah, I think it'd be perfect to cast on either side, let it swing through and see what we can't, uh, see what we can't conjure up. So I'm re-regging right now and hopefully we can get in there and get in there soon. Cause it's, uh, it's getting cloudy. It's getting a little chilly. I put my long sleeve back on. <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. So I'm just hoping for one. That would be so sick. The takes when you're swinging, I mean, <laughs> it's like nothing else. It's so fun. I like to keep a nice rhythm when I'm doing this whole swing thing. So I'll cast take a few steps, cast, take a few steps. Continue that rhythm all the way through the run. And what I usually like to do is cast at about a 45 degree angle and let that puppy swing. And let it swing with the current at the same speed. That allows our flies to sink, but also 
allows for a nice natural presentation. And sometimes, if you're lucky, you'll get a bite. But <laughs> make sure to set the hook and don't be dumb like me. Ah, that was one too. Well, managed to get a few to bite, but couldn't get him to take. That was fun though, that's a, that's a really cathartic way to work some water. It feels like I'm uh, doing the whole spay thing. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun, but we're gonna keep moving up and get on some fish, afternoon fish. You would think that that first fish was the proof in the pudding we were looking for, but I was again absolutely shocked at the size of this fish. We're in it again, baby. Oh my God. Keep doing this again. Oh my God, how are you bigger than the last one? Oh my God. <laughs> oh, oh my net is all f oh my God. Wow. Well folks, I've got good news and I've got some bad news. Good news is, is we might have just caught an even bigger trout than before. Bad news is, is I paid the price for it. I, fighting it, I slipped and I, man, I hit hard. My whole right side is wet and uh, <laughs> sore. But let's get a look at this pigo. <laughs> I mean, come on. Look at that freaking fish. Holy cow. <laughs> that thing's a tanker, man. Holy sh That is what you want when you come to the Gunnison, ladies and gentlemen. That is phenomenal. <laughs> oh my gosh. Easy there, sucker. Easy there, sucker. You're not good yet. <laughs> there we go. Woo! We're gonna keep an eye on her just to make sure she's doing okay. Hey now. Hey now. It can take them a while to catch their breath, find a good pocket before they actually go back to where they were originally sitting. So it's always good to just sit and wait with them as they're uh, yeah, reviving from that fight. You can see she's starting to get her color back. She's not as white. She's really starting to get that uh, rainbow blending green color. It just it just takes them a while. A fight like that is, is pretty stressful on the fish. As quickly as we tried to land her, it still took a lot out of her. All things considered, but you can just you can noticeably tell the colors changing. Her frequency of back and forth are changing. She's she's getting there. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. 
Yeah, <laughs> see you, sweetheart. Thank you. <laughs> Woo. Oh, man. <laughs> we paid the brass tax for that one. Totally worth it, though. That was the non GMO bow we were looking for for this afternoon. But man alive, I fell hard. And my knee, it hurts. It hurts so bad. <laughs> I'm just thinking about this hike out, man. I'm, I'm gonna be crawling out of here at like midnight. Goddamn. Whew. But enough being lazy and being a wimp. Let's show you the rig we got this guy on. There's a good chance I'm gonna go blue in the face explaining the adjustable dry dropper, folks. Adjustable dry dropper. That's what we're using as our indicator of sorts. And then below that, we've got a nice big stone fly. This part of the Gunnison is known. It's like iconic with its salmon fly hatch. So I figured when in Rome, you know, gotta throw it. But we actually got that guy on this right here. I have no idea what you would call it. It's like a Frankenstein Copper John meets Rainbow Warrior meets Marabou Curl. It's, it's a very strange fly. One of those when you tie it, you get done with it, you're like, I'm never going to use that. I'll give it to someone I, <laughs> I don't really care about. <laughs> but in today's very strange circumstances, I decided to tie it on and that, I mean, that was awesome. That caught us a flipping big old GMO bow, baby. <laughs> Oh, I've got two fish. I've got two fish. Unbelievable. Oh, it came off. Oh. <laughs> well, I hope the GoPro caught that. I had two fish on at the same time. That was wild. This is the guy that took the big old stone fly. Beautiful fish. <laughs> That's sweet. We'll see him back. go this is fun this is a lot of fun <sighs> well folks <laughs> it's been a day I think it's time for me to pack up and head out I didn't realize it, but it's almost four, and that hike out is probably gonna take me every bit till sundown, no doubt, so. With a busty camera, a busted knee, and a couple big old GMO bows in the bag, <laughs> I think we came out even, maybe? Talk to me after the hike, I don't know, shoot. God, this gun is in Gorge. This might be, this might be the wildest place I've ever fished. This is, this is so insane. Now just due to the nature of this trip and the circumstances we were faced with at the time, I had decided to make this a day trip. So whether I wanted to or not, it was time for this killer hike out. And I think it would only be fair to note that there are various campsites sprinkled along the banks of the Gunnison and they're pretty nice campsites I might add. So if you're considering coming down to the Gunnison, through the Black Canyon, I would highly, highly recommend making this an overnight trip. Stay an extra night, give your legs a chance to rest and recover, because trying to get down and then out of the Black Canyon in one day is extremely difficult, especially if you're not in peak condition. And I'd hate to be dramatic about it, but it really seems like everything in the canyon is conspiring against you to pull you back down to the river because you have to work for every inch.
Wow. What an amazing adventure. I mean, this was so incredible. And I really hope you out there who are still watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I try my best to put out a video of this caliber at least once a week. If I'm feeling good, I'll do too. So if you like this, consider subscribing. I mean, it really helps me out, helps what the Flyout Season team is doing. And yeah, man, I'd love to have you along for this journey. So with that being said, before I sign out, I got to give two quick shout outs. First and foremost, got to give a shout out to Visit Monteros. If you guys are looking to do some fishing, especially trout fishing in and around Colorado, I would highly, highly suggest the little mountain town of Monteros. They've got lodging, they've got fly shops, they've got breweries that any angler could ever handle. So they've got it all there, all squared away. So go visit the Visit Montrose website and they'll have you all squared away. The second big free fat shout out is Ant. That is Ant Fly Fishing, of course. They hooked us up with some stellar rods and we've been running them all summer. So if you wanna get yourself a nice Ant rod, use code Mike15 and you'll get 15% off that order. And yeah, man, it would really help them out. It helped me out too. So go check them out. And that is <laughs> that is quite enough rambling for me. I have I have said quite enough. So I will leave you with this. Wherever you find yourself, maybe in the Black Canyon of the Gunnison, I sure hope you're keeping those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines.